In this second video about the online features in Google Earth, we're going to focus on the menu here in the upper left hand corner. This is what you may have heard us refer to in the past as a hamburger menu. And when you click on it, you get lots of options for how you can change some of the settings and features that appear in Google Earth. So the first options underneath where you can see that I'm signed in are the same options that we have on the toolbar, the search, the voyage, or the projects. So we're going to skip past those options and we're going to begin right here with where it says map style. You can click on that and then this gives you the option to turn on and off certain features that you might want included. So for example they've got something called a clean map style that removes all the labels for the places. If we turn that exploration back on, that is the default one there. So you can see that um, some well-known places are labeled here. Then we have one called everything, where you see all of the roads here with lines and markers and um, identifiers for what the uh, street name or number is for that. And then you even have the ability to customize it. So if I want some of those things, but I don't want all of it, I can pick and choose a among the borders and labels, places, roads, transit, landmarks, and so on. So we'll turn this back to the exploration that we're used to seeing. And let's turn our attention a little bit lower underneath of just choosing the style of map. You have things like turning on and off the 3D buildings. So right now, because 3D buildings is turned on, if we zoom down in super close to the city here and we change to our 3D view, you'll see that some of these buildings seem to pop up out of the ground. If we turn off 3D buildings, we just go down to that aerial look where we're actually getting a true photograph of um, the aerial of this location and not those pop-up buildings that have been created for us to see. Then we have some additional options here like cloud animations and even turning on grid lines. So if one of the things you're working on with your students in class is latitude and longitude, you can turn on those And then if I begin to scroll out some, we see those uh, lines pop up. And depending on uh, the view that you've chosen, meaning how close or far your zoom level is, you'll notice that the grid lines um, begin to become less and less pronounced. And as you zoom in closer, you get more and more specific grid lines down to uh, partial degrees there for latitude and longitude. So I'm going to turn that off before we exit out of our map styles and return to our menu to take a look at our next option. The next option here in the uh, menu is to turn on the photos feature. So in addition to just the aerial satellite and street view imagery, you can bring up photos that are crowdsourced for a particular location. So if I wanted to learn a little bit more about, say, Shepherd Parkway down here, I can see that there are a few videos in this general area, and I can click on these and they'll load. Now, these are different than what we learned in the previous video as photo spheres. I cannot click and turn and look around in this. It's just a two-dimensional image of, in this case, the research laboratory. But some of these photos that you can click on are actually a collection of more than one. So if you take a look in the upper left-hand corner here, you'll see it says that this is one of four images included in this collection. And then I get these little white arrows on the left and right hand side of my screen that allow me to scroll through the different images included in this collection. After I have viewed the images that I would like, I can click the white arrow in the upper left hand corner in order to exit out of that photo and go back to the aerial view that I had. So you'll notice that as you scroll in or out of an area, you may see uh, fewer photos when scrolled out. And then if you place your cursor in a specific location and begin to scroll in, the longer that you wait, more and more photo images will pop up for that location so that you can and click and see what they have available in terms of photos. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, these photos are crowdsourced, meaning that Google will allow any visitor to this location to upload their uh, photos. And so in the bottom left-hand corner here, they will give attribution to who contributed this image. 
So if you're working on something where you're asking students to cite their sources, uh, it's great to give attribution to the person that contributed the photos. Let's go back into our hamburger menu again. I'll go ahead and turn off photos to get rid of some of that busyness on my screen there. And our last stop here in our menu is going to be to take a look at the choices that we have here in our settings. When you click on settings, you've got a couple of options that I think are really important to point out. So I'm not going to cover everything in here, but I am going to cover some of the important things that you may need to know. Right there at the top, you'll see there are three options for animations. There's flying animation, um, fly animation speed, and then ending uh, animation, which includes that orbital animation. So you may have noticed um, in this video or in a previous video that when we put in a new address, it flies you uh, to that new location. That can often um, make people feel a little bit disoriented, maybe even a little motion sickness. So it's important to know that if students um, report feeling a little dizzy or unwell when they're viewing Google Earth imagery, that they can turn off things like that fly animation, or sometimes just changing the speed to slow it down is great. Similarly, when we landed on a particular location, you notice that we had that spinning effect. That's the orbital animation. And I mentioned in the previous video that you can simply click anywhere on the screen to turn it off. But again, if a student reports to you that um, that that orbital animation is disorienting to them or maybe triggers any motion sickness, it can be turned off um, right here under the end animation in the settings. Now, please note that you, the teacher, cannot push out um, a particular set of settings to your students in Google Earth, but you can show them how to access these settings and they can turn them off for themselves when they're in here. Then we have some information down here under formats and units. Uh, you can choose your units of measure. By default, Google Earth will measure in meters and kilometers, but if you want your students to measure distances and feet and miles instead, that option is in there. And measurement is covered in video six, so look for more information about how to access the measurement tools, but know that one of the options to change your settings appears here. We just looked at a moment ago how to turn on latitude and longitude for the maps. You can choose between uh, degrees and decimal there. And then one of the interesting um, options down here is the ability to import KML files. KML are files that are created in the desktop version of Google Earth. So um, if you have anything from the website known as Google Lit Trips or anything that you may have created in the past when the only option was the desktop version of Google Earth, those KML files can be uploaded or imported here in the online version of Google Earth so that they can be viewed. And in order to do that, we would simply click to turn on this slider right here that allows the importing feature. And then we'll see that under the projects, which again will be covered in a future video. So now that we've seen some of the most important options here in the settings, you can click to save them as you customize them. Or if you don't make any changes, you can always click cancel to exit out. So that's our quick look at the menu here in Google Earth. Please look for the future videos on Google Earth.